Hi there. I've been told that I have a soothing voice, so I thought I could read you something that's both complicated and incomprehensible so that it's sufficiently boring to serve as a good sleep aid. Today I'll be reading from the Little Book of Semaphores, which is actually a really good and useful book for those who are learning how to use semaphores and mutexes for synchronization problems but I cannot deny that I have found it very complicated and a difficult topic to learn. Chapter 1 Introduction Synchronization In common use, synchronization means making two things happen at the same time. In computer systems, synchronization is a little more general. It refers to relationships among events any number of events, and any kind of relationship before, during, after. Computer programmers are often concerned with synchronization constraints, which are requirements pertaining to the order of events. Examples include serialization, event A must happen before event B, mutual exclusion, events A and B must not happen at the same time. In real life, we often check and enforce synchronization constraints using a clock. How do we know if A happened before B? If we know what time both events occurred, we can just compare the times. In computer systems, we often need to satisfy synchronization constraints without the benefit of a clock, either because there is no universal clock or because we don't know with fine enough resolution when events occur. That's what this book is about. Software Techniques for Enforcing Synchronization Constraints Execution Model In order to understand software synchronization, you have to have a model of how computer programs run. In the simplest model, computers execute one instruction after another in sequence. In this model, synchronization is trivial. We can tell the order of events by looking at the program. If statement A comes before statement B, it will be executed first. There are two ways things get more complicated. One possibility is that the computer is in parallel, meaning that it has multiple processors running at the same time. In that case, it is not easy to know if a statement on one processor is executed before a statement on another. Another possibility is that a single processor is running multiple threads of execution. A thread is a sequence of instructions that execute sequentially. If there are multiple threads, then the processor can work on one for a while, then switch to another, and so on. In general, the programmer has no control over when each thread runs. The operating system, specifically the scheduler, makes these decisions. As a result, again, the programmer can't tell when statements in different threads will be executed. For purposes of synchronization, there is no difference between the parallel model and the multi-thread model. The issue is the same. Within one processor or one thread, we know the order of execution, but between processors or threads, it is impossible to tell. A real-world example might make this clearer. Imagine that you and your friend Bob live in different cities, and one day, around dinner time, you start to wonder who ate lunch first that day, you or Bob. How would you find out? Obviously, you could call him and ask what time he ate lunch. But what if you started lunch at 11.59 by your clock and Bob started lunch at 12.01 by his clock? Can you be sure who started first? Unless you are both very careful to keep accurate clocks, you can't. Computer systems face the same problem because even though their clocks are usually accurate, there is always a limit to their precision. In addition, most of the time, the computer does not keep track of what time things happen. There are just too many things happening, too fast, to record the exact time of everything. Puzzle 
assuming that Bob is willing to follow simple instructions. Is there any way you can guarantee that tomorrow you will eat lunch before Bob? Serialization with messages. One solution is to instruct Bob not to eat lunch until you call. Then make sure you don't call until after lunch. This approach may seem trivial, but the underlying idea, message passing, is a real solution for many synchronization problems. At the risk of belaboring the obvious, consider this timeline. Thread A, you, eat breakfast, work, eat lunch, call Bob. Thread B, Bob, eat breakfast, wait for a call, eat lunch. The first column is a list of actions you perform. In other words, your thread of execution. The second column is Bob's thread of execution. Within a thread, we can always tell what order things happen. We can denote the order of events. A1 less than A2 less than A3 less than A4. B1 less than B2 less than B3. Where the relation A1 less than A2 means that A1 happened before A2. In general though, there is no way to compare events from different threads. For example, we have no idea who ate breakfast first. Is A1 less than B1? But with message passing, the phone call, we can tell who ate lunch first, A3 less than B3. Assuming that Bob has no other friends, he won't get a call until you call, so B2 greater than A4. Combining all the relations, we get B3 greater than B2 greater than A4 greater than A3, which proves that you had lunch before a Bob. In this case, we would say that you and Bob ate lunch sequentially because we know the order of events and you ate breakfast concurrently because we don't. When we talk about concurrent events, it is tempting to say that they happen at the same time or simultaneously. As a shorthand, that's fine, as long as you remember the strict definition. Two events are concurrent if we cannot tell by looking at the program which will happen first. Sometimes we can tell after the program runs which happen first, but often not. And even if we can, there is no guarantee that we will get the same result the next time. Non-determinism. Concurrent programs are often non-deterministic which means it is not possible to tell by looking at the program what will happen when it executes. Here is a simple example of a non-deterministic program. Thread A, print yes. Thread B, print no. Because the two threads run concurrently, the order of execution depends on the scheduler. During any given run of this program, the output might be yes, no, or no, yes. Non-determinism is one of the things that make concurrent programs hard to debug. A program might work correctly a thousand times in a row and then crash on the thousand and first run, depending on the particular decisions of the scheduler. These kinds of bugs are almost impossible to find by testing. They can only be avoided by careful programming. Shared variables. Most of the time, most variables in most threads are local, meaning that they belong to a single thread and no other threads can access them. As long as that's true, there tend to be few synchronization problems because threads just don't interact. But usually some variables are shared among two or more threads. This is one of the ways threads interact with each other. For example, one way to communicate information between threads is for one thread to read a value written by another thread. If the threads are unsynchronized, then we cannot tell by looking at the program whether the reader will see the value the writer writes or an old value that was already there. Thus, many applications enforce the constraint that the reader should not read until after the writer writes. This is exactly the serialization problem in section 1.3. Other ways that threads interact are concurrent writes, two or more writers, and concurrent updates, two or more threads performing a read followed by a write. The next two sections deal with these interactions. 
the other possible use of a shared variable, concurrent reads, does not generally create a synchronization problem. Thank you for listening to that, and I hope that it was in some way helpful to you.